Hi! Welcome back to the second video on response selection. In the previous video, we introduced the idea of response selection with these examples. We talked about a chatbot that needs to be able to order pizzas, but also needs to be able to handle chit chat and frequently asked questions. We then argued that we might have a separate response selection model for both frequently asked questions and chit chat. And then we discussed a model for it. The model diagram looked like this. We have two inputs, user text and a response, and both have a numeric representation, and we're using the star space trick here to be able to compare them. Now, this diagram demonstrates the algorithmic idea, but not the implementation, which is something I'd like to highlight in this video. The interesting thing is that this response selection algorithm can be implemented using Diet as a backend, and it's worth pointing out how this is done. So let's zoom in on that. So what we're looking at right now is the overview architecture diagram for diet. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to remove a few parts that I think will not be relevant for the use case that I currently have at hand. And in particular, I think the first thing that we can just go ahead and delete is this masking loss because we won't be doing any masking. Okay, so there we go. The masking is now gone. And the token over here, that was the token that was masked, is no longer masked, so we just have our normal token that is the input for this algorithm. But now, if I think about response selection, then typically I'll also not have any need for entity detection. So what I can do is I can also just go ahead and erase that as well. Now, if I look at this diagram, then I notice that the only loss I really have is the intent loss. So that means I can get rid of this as well. So as a final step, let's also remove the transformer. That is a hyperparameter I have available to me in diet. So that means that I can choose to remove it. With the transformer removed now, these token blocks that I have over here, they are no longer connected to anything. So that means that I can also go ahead and erase those. So what I'm left with now is a variant of diet given some configuration of hyperparameters. We've removed the transformers. We are not doing entity detection anymore. There's no masking. And if you use these settings, then this is what the algorithm reduces to. Now, let's compare this to the diagram that we made in the previous segment. So just to reiterate, on the left-hand side here, I have diet with certain settings. On the right-hand side, we have our star space method for response selection. And what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to have a look at what we've got over here. And that token is supposed to summarize the entire utterance. So that means that we could argue that what comes out of here, that's pretty much what we've got here. What comes out of this green block is a representation of text that came out of the utterance. And after that, we get a embedding layer, which is just this normal feed forward layer over here. The main effect of which is making sure that the output has a certain size. And after that, we are passing it to a similarity calculation. And we see that both in the diet configuration, as well as over here in our star space method. So, so far, this is looking very similar. But let's now zoom in on the representation for the response. So we understand the text representation, but the next question is what is happening over here? And there's a few things that we could do. I mean, technically, let's say that we've got four possible responses. The one thing that we could do is we could one hot encode that in an array and then pass that along to the embedding layer. and this idea wouldn't be terrible, 
In fact, that's how diet currently handles intents. But in the case of responses, we can actually go a step further. After all, if we ask the question, what is this response? Well, it's not exactly the same as an intent. And that is because typically a response has text associated with it. If you take the answer from an FAQ question, that answer will just be text. And then you can wonder, hey, that text? That text probably has sparse features. And that text may also have dense features. There might be a pre-trained word embedding around. So that means as opposed to normal intents, if we have a response here, then we actually have access to different features. So let's illustrate that. If you now look at what we have here, because we have text going in both here as well as here, we can share the same featureizers quite easily. And this is going to give us more context than if we were just to one hot encode these response texts. But primarily, I hope that if you now look at what we have here, if I were to draw a circle around this, we have a natural correspondence over here. And if I were to look at this embedding layer, that corresponds with this one. And we're becoming full circle because the similarity we have over here is once again shown over here. And I hope that it's now somewhat more evident that we can implement star space for response selection using diet as the backend. By setting hyperparameters the right way, we can reuse our diet architecture to also be used in this use case. So a few things to conclude and to wrap up. On the left hand side, we have our diet implementation, but with specific settings. The base settings that we have here remove the transformer, and because there are no intents here, we have responses and they have texts, we have the opportunity to reuse some of our featureization, which we normally don't do when we use diet as a classifier. Note that each response will have a unique embedding. If we have a look at what comes out over here, which again is the same thing as what comes out over here, then for every response text that we will have, let's say that we've got four responses, then for each of those responses, we are going to have a single embedding coming out of this yellow circle that is unique. And these responses, well, they might share features. If we have a look at what's happening inside of this red circle over here, then yes, if the response text has similar words being used, then we can imagine similar features being here. But what comes out of the embedding layer, the yellow circle, that's a numeric array that corresponds to a single response. And I hope it's also clear that for the use case for response selection, this is a nice situation to be in. By having all of the features at our disposal here, we're able to construct a model that is more specialized for the FAQ or chit chat use case. And this might alleviate some of the burden on the main diet classifier when it comes to detecting intents. I figured wrapping up with this observation is a nice way to conclude this topic because it also gives a nice demonstration of the flexibility of diet. With a simple implementation, we can cover a lot of ground use case wise by only changing some hyperparameters. And that's nice to have when you're maintaining a stack of tools. And I hope that you agree that that flexibility really is a nice feature. But as far as response selection goes, the main win that we are going to have here is specialized models towards a frequently asked questions use case. And we can do a little bit more than just one hot encoding response selections. We can use extra features. And this is what's happening inside of Raza when you use response selection.